the particular case of violence which found universal appeal in the media is, of course, the war in Bosnia. One of the recurrent motives of the media is compassion with the victims. What's the role of this compassion? Why this compassion? The problem of the West, of the big media, was how to show compassion, but while precisely by showing compassion, avoiding the identification with this horrifying case of the other, in other words, uh, maintain a proper, a proper distance. I think that the whole point of compassion is that it allows you breathing space, it allows you a kind of patronizing distance towards the other. If you say, isn't it horrible to see the kid whose leg was blown apart with a Serbian bomb on a Sarajevo street, okay, this is still nothing against it, pure shock. But the logic of solidarity is not this. The logic of solidarity is, isn't it nice to be touched with millions of other people with the scene of a kid whose leg was blown apart, so that the true point is not you and the poor kid. The true point is your identification with, with all of other people who feel good precisely by being solidary. This is, as it were, the constitutive life in this solidarity. Which is why I think that, ah, it's even more complicated here. Uh, another element to add is how, to what extent, precisely as victims par excellence, the people of Sarajevo already developed a kind of narcissistic satisfaction in the sense that they are elevated to the, how should I call it, sublime post of being a victim par excellence. So that uh, uh, they liked it very much, they enjoyed very much the idea that they are on the center stage of the world, they are center of attention. So, uh, Isn't this a very, very cynical position to claim that the people in Sarajevo enjoy their suffering? I wouldn't say it's cynical, I would rather say it's ironical, and I think cynicism and irony should be opposed strictly. It would be cynical if this would mean, you see, they are not really suffering, they are really enjoying it effectively. Uh, if you approach it in an ironic way, it's the opposite. The fact that they find a kind of perverted satis uh, satisfaction, narcissistic satisfaction in it, makes it even more tragic or to use uh, an example from a different domain where we have to make the same distinction, let's say that a woman is raped, and let's say that while she is raped, it can happen, she is at the same time at least minimally sexually aroused. Now, the main chauvinist cynicism would, me, would be, of course, you see, it's not really a, uh, uh, it's not really a, a rape, she secretly enjoyed it. I think the proper feminist thing to do, it's not to deny the enjoyment, but to say this makes it even more tragic, this makes it even more horrible. Would you really claim she enjoys it? It is possible to enjoy it. Uh, okay, I mean, what I know now from, from reports of women, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, claiming to read woman's mind, but uh, as to the last part of your question, is it possible to enjoy it? I claim that there definitely is impossible to enjoy it. That's the whole lesson of psychoanalysis that you can enjoy your pain, you can enjoy your humiliation. I mean, uh, uh, the whole psychoanalytic Freud's revolution is based on this, that there is not a kind of a healthy, non-perverted, clean enjoyment in there, then it's perversions. That this possibility of perversion, where you enjoy, how should I put it, in a politically incorrect way, is part of the very concept of enjoyment.